Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to work on our magic projectile. So let's just jump into it. Uh, so we have created our uh, BP projectile base here now, which we are currently spawning in the world at 000, which is not very useful. So now we need to spawn it somewhere where it is actually useful. So um, to start off, what we will be doing is We'll make it a little bit easy for us in the beginning and do something hacky and then we'll uh, improve upon it a little bit later. Uh, so for now we will be creating a scene component. No, is that not what it's called? Um, it's just called scene. Okay, so scene we can use and we can put it as, we can call it uh, spell spawner or something. This is going to be our location where we spawn our spells from, just so we have an easy location to start off with. Um, so we'll put it under our uh, mesh so that it's in relation to our mesh. And we will place it so that it is, uh, let's say, a little bit in front of us, like so. And now what we can do is... Uh, 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 we will for now create an interface and we will say dpi get spell spawn essentially saying get spell spawn location so output is a location vector uh, spell spawn location that's not how you spell any of this like so excellent we'll go to our third person character and we'll say implement this uh, spell spawn and then we'll implement the interface and say uh, open graph and we'll say that the location that we want to return here is going to be our spell spawners location that doesn't work we need to get the actor location uh, location not the actor location sorry we need to get um, world location like so uh, so now we have that and then we can say in our combat here when we're spawning we can say um get owner uh, get spell spawn location and hook it up there uh, now this should hopefully be the case that we now spawn the little um, sphere in front of us which we do so that's all good and fine um so that's, that's a good start at least. Now we can start to add some functionality to this in the form of, um, we can give it some speed. So we can give it maybe an initial speed of 3000 maybe. That should equate to 30 meters per second, I believe. So that is super not 30 meters per second. So let's see what could be causing that. The first thing we can fix is, of course, we notice that we can't actually run past this object, and that is because we have a block all dynamic here currently. We could change this to overlap only pawn. Um, that should at least fix it so that we can get past it. Uh, in addition to that... We could use continuous collision detection for better precision. Uh, we don't want to have gravity because we decided we shouldn't have that. Um, 
It's a bit curious. It should be work working, I think. Yeah, let's try this again and see if we get an error message or anything. So we spawn... Okay. Now it seems to be spawning at least. Okay, so maybe one of the settings that we had was in uh, having a problem with it. So uh, now that we have the ability to move through them, which is good. And we can see that it uh, collides with the wall also. Um, we can see, however, that it's not spawning in the right direction. So let's do this. Let's go to our interface. Where's the interface? There we go. And change this from a vector to a transform. So spell spawn transform is what we will be renaming it to. Uh, the difference between a vector and a transform, if you're not aware, is that a vector, uh, a tra sorry, a transform also has other information. Sorry, I just cut out the end. Uh, other information except for the location, it also has scale and rotation. Um, so going back to our projectile base, we can, no, our uh, combat ability, we can refresh this now. And we can recombine these and add it up like so. And now it should be at least going in the right direction because uh, a projectile goes in X direction uh, when it's, it is spawned. And X direction is, well, okay, that didn't work at all. Uh, let's see, can we find this one? Uh, let's see, fireball. Okay, so it is spawning below there. It's okay, so we're getting some zero value. Uh, let's see, yeah, that's probably because in our. Where are we? In the ability? No. Uh, where did we put that? I'm confusing myself a little bit. I'm so sorry. Um, we're getting it on the owner. So third person character. This is the problem. Okay, apparently I spelled that completely wrong as well. Uh, let's fix that. Spell spawn transformer. Like so. Third person character. We now want to get transform instead. Uh, get world to transform hook that up and since it's using x which means if we go into the viewport and click on spell spawner you can see x is the red direction here so the forward arrow here currently and that's why it will be using that properly in the the projectile base here i wonder if we can actually see that in the setting somewhere Maybe we can't. Oh, projectile movement, it will be then. Um, it's probably going to use the in local space here using X, probably. Anyway, so compiling and running. It's now spawning at least in front of us and in the direction we are actually looking at. So that's that's a good start. Now we have the situation where uh, the projectile is uh, colliding with walls, which is good because uh, if we were to shoot a fireball, we might want to have it so that when it hits something like a wall or something else, uh, it should be explode and stop existing. But we also have the ability to overlap with actors uh, of the type pawn, uh, which means we can make use of that to determine things like uh, damaging them and such. So if we were to... Uh, say on the static mesh here that we want to add an event for uh, on component begin overlap for example we can print out here and say if let's yeah let's just print out and say uh, overlapped like so And if we now spawn a projectile, we can run up to it hopefully and overlap and you can see that it says overlapped when, when we do that. Uh, so that can, well, that can be used to determine uh, doing damage to things. Uh, in addition to that, we also have the ability of 
uh, since we're hitting walls, if we are, um, there's an event called hit. And this one is reacting whenever it is generating a hit event against something. So if we were to print here and print hit and then shoots, we can see that it prints out hit whenever it hits the wall. So we have two different uh, situations we can react to in this case if we wanted to. Um, and what we might want to do is have something like um, uh, a unifying event, so like a custom event. Let's call it destruction, because when it hits something, we want to destroy it here. No, not that one. We want to call destruction. And then if it overlaps, we can say we also want to go to destruction. So regardless if it hits a character upon or a wall or something else like that, it will just print out whatever message it is and then go to destruction. So let's see what happens then. So we'll do this. It prints out hit and if we overlap, it says overlap, but we're not currently doing anything in destruction, but we can now add uh, destroy actor, for example. Which means that if we now shoot the fireball towards the wall, it will say hit and then despawn itself. Okay. Um, in this case, where we have hit something, we want to send the information of what it has hit. So, uh, in the projectile base here, we can say we want to have a actor as input here. And we can say it is the hit actor. And the hit actor here could either be the, let's see here, this should be other here, yeah, actor reference. So this, let's reroute it a little bit. Or it can be the actor from over here, which would be the other actor. And we can as a test say, over here, before we actually do this, we can say print and we can print out whatever the actor is. Like so. We hit wall seven and then we destroyed ourselves. Uh, some prudent information or checking here might be that we make sure that this other actor isn't ourselves. Uh, because this could happen if you have a location that is spawning too close to your character, for example. So we might want to have an exclamation mark not equal and check against owner to at least allow it to spawn and fly away from um, ourselves a bit before it is actually possible to detonate with something else. Then we'll just hook up a branch for this saying when it is not us, then we'll continue to do this. Just a minor little detail that might call, cause problems otherwise. Okay, our projectile is starting to come along. I think this might be a good place to stop for now. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.